A formula is simply the mathematical instruction telling Excel how to combine numerical data in a spreadsheet. Formulas can contain numbers, text, operators, cell and range addresses, range names, functions, and other variables. The formulas we'll use for this budget are very simple. Balance means income minus total expenses. Total expenses is the sum of all the expenses listed here. Although we don't have any numbers in the spreadsheet, we can still set up the correct formulas to calculate our raw data. It must seem pretty strange if you haven't used a spreadsheet before, but in fact, we've just touched on the real power of spreadsheet programs. We can write formulas to define the relationship between items, such as adding or subtracting, without even knowing the value of those items. We can then enter different numbers to test various models for their answers. This is called a what-if scenario. Let's write a formula calculating the balance for January. We can either write a formula or use the formula ribbon. We will do both. Click in cell B13 where the answer to the formula should appear. Type an equal sign. This tells Excel we want to start writing a formula. If we were to start typing without first using an equal sign, Excel assumes we are entering a label instead of creating a formula. Notice the equal sign also appears in the formula bar. Click cell B3. The cell address appears both in cell B13 and in the formula bar. Type a minus sign to show we want to subtract the second cell from the first, and click cell B11. The formula we just wrote is income, which is in cell B3 minus total expenses in cell B11. This formula calculates the balance for January, so click the check mark on the formula bar or press the enter key. A zero appears in cell B13, the balance for January. It's the result of calculating the formula. It's zero because we haven't entered any actual income or expense numbers yet. Once a formula is entered, it is no longer displayed in the cell unless we are editing the formula. We just created the simplest kind of formula, adding or subtracting two cells. Let's create a formula to add the five categories of expenses together. Click cell B11, January Total Expenses. Type an equal sign to tell Excel a formula is coming. Now type in B6 plus B7 plus B8 plus B9 plus B10 to list all the expense cells for January. We could use the point and click technique for the balance formula as well. Check it carefully for typing errors. We don't want to miss any expenses and we surely don't want to add any twice. Our formula looks correct so press the enter key. Once again we have zero for the answer. The last formula took a lot of time in typing. Let's look at a shortcut to make addition quicker and easier. The shortcut is called the SUM function. It adds values or ranges of cells together. We can create it ourselves or have Excel insert it for us. Just what is the difference between a function and a formula? Functions are formulas. They are predefined by Excel and come with its software. The SUM function is one of them. Let's see how it works. Select cell C11 for the destination of this function. Type an equal sign. The word sum, S-U-M. Notice as we type, Excel pulls up a list of formulas matching what we've typed so far. This list helps us quickly select a formula rather than having to type the whole word. It also gives us a text box briefly explaining what the function does. Type in open parentheses. Leave no spaces between the parts of the formula. Our sum function needs a list of the specific values, called arguments, to add together. In this case, the variables we want are the expense cell addresses for February. Click and drag the mouse from the expense cell for February rent, which is C6, to the cell for February insurance, C10. As we highlight those cells, they are outlined and their cell addresses are written into the sum function's variables area. Although each cell's address doesn't appear, that's okay. It won't affect the function's ability to perform the correct calculation. A marquee surrounds the selected cells called a cell range. Basically, they are a group of cells that Excel, and in this instance, the sum function, treats as a whole. What is seen in the arguments area is the address for that cell range. 
The start and end of the cell range is separated by a colon in the body of the formula. A function formula has three parts, all of which are shown here. First is the equal sign. It tells Excel that a formula is being used. Second is the name of the function, sum in this case. And finally, a list of arguments. Arguments are the variables in a function formula that tell Excel which cells will be used in the function's calculations. That list of arguments is always enclosed by parentheses. To complete the function, type a closed parenthesis. Upon typing the right parenthesis, the marquee surrounding the cells becomes a box with solid lines. Press the Enter key. And there's another zero, indicating our formula for total expenses has been entered into the cell. Let's do one more method of entering a formula, this time using the ribbon. Click the Formulas tab. One of the exciting features on the Formula Tool area is the Function Library. These icons list mathematical categories that help us locate any formula we may need to find, including financial, logical, text, date and time, lookup and reference, and math and trig. There's even an icon recording the more recently used functions. The first icon is the auto sum, which is the one we have created on our own. Let's use this for our next column. Click D11. Click the drop down arrow under the auto sum icon. There's no need to enter an equal sign first. We have several options under this icon, including averages, minimum, and maximum. We will be using several of these formulas throughout our Excel lessons, but for now, click Sum. Take a look at the formula Excel selected. Instead of adding the numbers above, it is guessing we want to add the numbers to the left of the cell. That is easy to fix. Click D6, and while holding down the mouse button, drag to cell D10. There's our formula. Click Enter or click the check mark on the formula bar. Now we need to put the formulas into the other months, and there's a quick way to do that. By using the fill handle to copy the monthly balance formula into the remaining months. We've already seen this work with text, but it works with formulas too. We'll start by selecting the cell containing the data we want to copy, B13. Move the mouse pointer to the square on the lower right of the cell until the pointer shape changes to the fill handle. Drag the fill handle from cell C13 to G13 and release the mouse button. That's all there is to it. While it was making copies, Excel did something extra for us behind the scenes. Click cell C13 and look in the formula bar. It shows the formula in column C subtracts C11 from C3. The formula adjusted itself as it was copied into each new location. Let's try a second method to copy formulas. Select cell C11 and click the copy icon in the clipboard tool area of the Home tab. It has the two little pieces of paper on it. Excel automatically copies our formula onto the clipboard. Click cell E11, which is the destination of our formula. Click the paste icon. It's the big one with a clipboard and paper on it. Cell E11 now has a modified copy of the sum formula in cell C11. Excel adjusted the cell references for us, so the formula works properly within this column. While we have the sum function on the Windows clipboard, let's copy that formula into cell B11 to replace that old plus 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 formula. Select B11. Let's clean up that formula. This time, let's use the keyboard shortcut for pasting, Control V. There's the sum formula properly adjusted to add up the expenses in column B. Suzanne, go ahead and copy the formula to the two remaining months. Click cell E11 and use the fill handle to fill in the formula through June. Or use the paste icon for each cell. Before we go much further, let's save the new changes to our spreadsheet. Go ahead and click the Save icon. We're ready to move to the next section, Entering Data.